Hello, in this video I would like to talk about analog cameras, about film cameras. I um, get the impression when I see vid YouTube videos that um, people are unhappy with uh, some kind of their cameras because they don't work properly, uh, because they um, want to start with the hobby of taking film pictures, film photography but um, they, they have bad luck or they have difficulties to find um, a good working camera and I also have the impression that they make unfortunately bad decisions when uh, they are deciding for uh, an, uh, film camera so um, if you start out with film camera, I would recommend basically a point and shoot camera of this kind um, or maybe of this kind. So these cameras are more or less are pretty recent. They, are, they have autofocus, they have automatic film advance, they have a flash, they both work with AA batteries, that's important that you have that they work with batteries which are available and um, this camera of course is the more sophisticated one with you can set the ISO speed um, you can ha it has a, a filter thread it um, has um, backlight compensation button so you can compensate that um, it has a lot of features which are, which are very nice but of course this camera I think has become quite expensive on the internet um, this kind of camera I can uh, recommend I would not recommend cameras which with which some kind of zoom I recommend compact cameras with a fixed focal length um, as few parts as possible when you get your camera uh, make sure you get the manual for this camera so that you know how to operate it um, it shouldn't be um, if, if you open the contacts of the of the camera the batteries should uh, shouldn't have leaked the contact should be clean you can of course clean the contacts if they are dirty um, before you insert a film, um, test the shutter. You can test if the shutter is actually working. Uh, you can do that by opening the camera back, uh, pointing the camera towards some uh, bright um, object and look down this shaft while you're pressing the release button. You, so, you should see a flash of light inside this um, shaft. The, there is an iris, it opens and closes during the exposure and you should be able to see that. You should be able to see that something is happening. Also look careful at this um, aperture from the back and from the front and look if there is some kind of oil on the metal shades look if the lens has some kind of the lens should be clear and you can clean the, the lens with a soft tissue uh, and it should become really nice and clear if there is some kind of fog on the inside or dust or something then keep away from the camera Unfortunately, I cannot recommend cameras of this type. Um, that's my old Sorky, Sorky 6. Um, there are a lot of different um, rangefinder models from, uh, from the Russians. And um, they are really nice. They are actually well made. But unfortunately, 
basically all of them have problems with the shutter if you if you want to have a nice um, project for 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 um, taking it apart cleaning it taking uh, screwing it back together if you enjoy these kind of things you can of course do that it's a very interesting but if you are into actually taking pictures if you want to actually create negatives um, this camera is not a good place to start even if it would be working perfectly you still have a very limited camera with a lot of potential for messing up the exposures if you want to take pictures i recommend this kind of camera this is my favorite small camera um, you will you will even if you later buy more sophisticated cameras with exchangeable lenses you still will use this kind of camera so this is a very good first kind of first camera i can recommend this type uh, very much there are a lot of different models from all kind of brands from the same area era with the same functions um, they should be very all very similar just uh, make sure you can get the batteries they have the AA type batteries that's very convenient and makes your life very much easier but maybe you don't want the small cameras maybe you want to have the real deal to uh, make the classical 35 mm film and a lot of people then make in my opinion the error the mistake they want to have a camera with a classic look like this one with a lot of chrome and the manual wind and uh, all that kind of things but they don't want to get really into the basics of photography so they, they say okay I, I take one of these models which has um, which has the classic look but electronics inside which will give me uh, aperture priority mode for example there are certain models like the Canon AE-1 program there are a lot of other cameras from Nikon from Olympus which are similar which have the looks of the old classic cameras but they have a electronic controlled shutter and they offer aperture priority mode or something like this and um, the problem with these cameras is they um, have very old electronic in them which it was not reliable but, and um, it starts to fail um, they need certain type of battery with batteries which are not available available anymore they um, the electronics start to fail and they don't notice they don't know how to recognize if the camera is still working properly or if it's not working properly or for example they do get an old camera like this and they don't bother checking the light meter if it's still working properly for example this model it's a Nikormat FD2 and um, they assume the light meter is still working properly even if the needle is um, showing something uh, when you um, point the camera at something and put a battery in it um, doesn't mean that um, the, the, the reading is properly and um, a lot of these old cameras also need a kind of battery which is not available anymore um, a battery on the basis of mercury this type of batteries are were forbidden stay away from the classic looking cameras which offer a electronic controlled shutter unless they are very recent like for example the Nikon, Nikon F3 models which were made in the 90s or late 80s but I, I, I wouldn't get anything electronic which is older than let's say the 80s or even better than 90s um, the electronics they do age they have didn't have the quality 
which electronics do they have? Um, to, to start with, and they are older, and some things like the light seals, the dampers, this kind of stuff which is made of rubber, they degrade over time. The, the chemical substances fall apart and um, they were not lubricated and so on and so on. So um, these old cameras, they are looking really great and you can have them if uh, cheap as some kind of nice um, decoration for your flat but <clears throat> unless you really know what you are doing and unless you really understand what this is and how it should work I would stay away from them even reputable, sell reputable sellers have equipment from this time period which isn't really properly working anymore and they ask really high prices I would recommend if you want the 35 millimeter photography, a camera which was made in the 90s or 2000s, like this one, then F90X, there are other models from Canon, from Olympus, you name it. Um, they have modern day electronics, more or less modern day. They um, have, they are young. They are only a few ten dozen years old, so all the mm, dampers, all this kind of thing stuff, is of higher quality than it was back then in the 70s and 80s, and it's younger. So you will, if you want to create actual negatives of which are correctly exposed, which are technically proper, so you can go with them in the dark room and get some prints I would recommend get a camera like this and uh, you have they are not expensive I paid for this camera in a few years ago it has it was in its original box and it had basically zero exp um, exposures on it I paid a 30 euro 30 euros today uh, today it would cost more the, the prices have increased but I still think that you can that you can get uh, F90X in very good condition for uh, under 50 euros or something like this if you um, look for it. And even if you pay 100 euros for it, it's still worth it. But let's assume you have not a lot of experience and you still want such a classic camera. What can you look for? Uh, what kind of camera can you look for and um, how could you check it? Well, I will try to give some tips. Um, first of all, choose the right model. Um, uh, make sure it is a model which is fully manual, fully mechanical, which uses the battery only for light metering, not for exposing, not for controlling the shutter. When you finally get a hold of the camera and can check it, um, I, um, I assume it comes with a lens. If it doesn't, you can skip the part with the lens. But it would be good if you at least take a lens with you, if it doesn't come with a lens. So first of all, let's check this lens. Um, turn the focus ring. It should be smooth and equal around the whole range. Check if the focus stops at infinity there should be a hard stop on this place if it doesn't stop at infinity <coughs> someone messed with the lens you should stay away from it um, the lens ring should rotate nice if it doesn't then it may be that it's locked in a certain position like this one like this lens here it has a lock but if it's an old lens, it should turn like this. It's generally to, it's good to inform yourself about the technology of these lenses. Then, very important, check the glass elements. Look from it from behind. 
Is there some uh, fungus, something in it, on the inside, dust or, or some, something else from the front and from the back? It's okay if, if it's, there's dust on the outside, but if it's on the inside, um, then, well, if it's, um, you can still get it if it's not a lot of dust, but uh, it should be, there should be basically no dust inside the lens. Then, very important, check the aperture. You see, there's this small hole in the middle. When I turn the aperture ring, it opens and closes. That should work. Um, there's a little metal pin. If you hold it, it should open, and if you release it, it should immediately close. There should be no delay. It shouldn't close slowly or something like this, no. In the very moment you release it, it's closed. That's important. That's very important. If that, that doesn't work, stay away from it. Then check the blades on the inside. Is there, is there oil? There are metal blades we are, which are creating this aperture. Check if there is any um, oil um, on the, on the, between these apertures. Because you have to understand these lenses are very old. They have been greased back in the day and this grease um, decomposes over time or it can decompose over time. And there is uh, some kind of uh, liquid in it, which gets mobilized over time and it starts spreading and goes to places it's not supposed to go. And the lens apertures, they are supposed to be dry. They are not supposed to be lubricated. If they are lubricated, if there is some liquid, some oil in between, they will get stuck. And then you can, you basically have to open the lens, clean everything, that's only worth it if the lens is really expensive and really good. Otherwise, stay far away from it. Also worth noting the, 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 the filter thread. There's a thread on the outside. Uh, this thread is used to thread on filters and hoods uh, and, and shades like this. Um, if you don't use filters, maybe you say, no, I don't care. Uh, but um, understand if this, this red is damaged, if there is, for example, a dent in it because it has fallen down, the lens should be consider considerably more cheap, also cheaper, considerably cheaper than with an intact um, thread. Now the camera itself. What should we check? First of all, look from the front inside the camera. There is the mirror. Is it clean? Then um, there is there are dampers, where, which are softening the heat of the mirror. Uh, they, they usually they start to decompose over time. This one is really nice. I think um, the guy who owned it before me exchanged it. It exchanged it sometime during sometimes uh, buy new ones. Look on the surface of the camera. Are there big dents? Um, is there um, hard dirt, a little bit of dirt and dust, it doesn't matter. Their cameras are old. But um, if there are big dents, um, then basically you should be, probably you should stay away from it. Look through the viewfinder. Can you see, look through the viewfinder. Put on a lens. Check if you um, can focus properly, if um, the image is, is clear, are there any big dust particles or uh, any debris inside. Now check the shutter. Open the back of the camera. Put the camera to bulb, to um, time exposure. As long as you press the, the button, the exposure button, the, the shutter will be open. So, tension the shutter, look from behind through the camera, release it. Now look, can you see the whole frame? If you look from behind, can you see the whole frame? Is there something obstructing? Is there something sticking in? No, it, it's not. Don't put your finger in this hole. If you um, 
touch the shutter, it will be dead, broken. For, okay, so you can dis completely destroy the camera if you stick something in it while it's open. Um, now, you go through all the times. I recommend to start with the fast times. This, on this model, it's one thousandth of a second. Tension again, look. You should be able to see that the shutter opens at any time. Maybe you don't see it in the video because of the shutter uh, of this camera, but uh, I in real life can see at every time that it opens and closes. I go through all the times. Fifties, fifteenths of a second. Eighths of a second. Quarter second. Half a second. and a full second. Now we can close the back again. The next thing is we want to see if the camera operates the aperture. Um, I will take a long exposure time like half a second and um, I tension the shutter and pull the release and I want to see that the aperture plates close during exposure and open again after the exposure has happened. Therefore, I, I, I have chosen a small aperture. So I am satisfied. I can see the um, aperture closing and opening in again. Then I check the self timer. On a lot of old cameras, it's not working any properly anymore. But if you, if it's important for you, you should check it. On this particular model, it's still working quite fine. Yeah, very nice. I look at the spool operate the manual wind. Look, does it turn? Yes, it turns. It does work. Now you also can look at this plate. This plate um, presses the film against this window so that it's nice uh, even. And um, you can see um, how much films this camera um, head and um, I, if the camera had a lot of films there are um, markings hori horizontal markings but there is absolutely nothing visible so um, this camera hasn't seen a lot of films this camera wasn't used a lot actually um, also one mistake I think a lot of people are making is they go for the professional models like the Nikon F, F2, F3, but uh, they have to think that this were professional models. So a lot of them were used by people who took a lot of pictures and they uh, a lot of them are really worn down. So um, um, the, the Nikon Mart, for example, is a, is a camera which is not very popular today, but it's actually very well built and um, if you are interested in something like a Nikon F or F2, um, this is actually a, a, a cheap, a good alternative because the models are usually not very much used. They are also very well built and, and um, 
you get a really nice camera. Uh, but you have to understand, Nikomats usually they use the old CDS light meters, and most of them are dead or inaccurate today. So you have to understand that you will need an external light meter. So um, if you are interested in film photography, but also I are uh, using digital photography like me, then um, I personally can uh, recommend the Nikon F system. Um, the F mount was has been built since a long time, and um, there are a lot of different lenses and cameras, and they are all interchangeable, uh, almost all. Um, the professional and semi-professional models um, like the F90X and the D700 but also the F100 and um, D800 whatever they can all use basically all F-mount lenses and uh, I would recommend if you want to shoot film and digital to stick with lenses which have some kind of aperture ring because um, this is a modern day 28 to uh, 70 lens it's good for digital but it can be also be used on this camera this Nikomat cameras and also the FM, FM2 camera, they can uh, operate every lens with a lens ring, uh, with an aperture ring. I have here, for example, a 135 AIS, a 35mm AIS, 60mm um, Micronico IFD, 50mm IFD, two Sigma zooms, um, a small one, a big one. And they are all interchangeable. I can use these lenses on all of this camera. There are in the F, like Nikon F world, other cameras and lenses like this one. This uh, is the Nikon F60. I personally like the camera because of the shape of the grip. I think it's uh, it fits my hand very well, and sometimes I use it. But uh, of course, you have to understand. This camera doesn't work with um, AIS lenses or AI lenses. This camera needs at least AF lenses, Nikon F AF lenses. Um, and it has the disadvantage of um, rather unusual battery format. You still get this kind of batteries, but I don't know how long you will still get them, and um, they are uh, also quite expensive. Um, but they last long, they still last long, and if you don't use flash a lot of, uh, of a lot of times, um, you will still get a lot of rolls with this camera. The Nikon F90X it uses AA batteries. Um, they last really forever and it has a very good exposure control. So if you um, want to get into film photography, I would recommend as a first camera, this kind of camera, because you will always need this kind or want to, to use this kind of camera. Even if you all have all of this, even if you have that, you still uh, from time to time we'll use this camera. It's so nice. It's so easy um, Just open it you just um, Photograph it's it's a dream. It's really really nice. It's simple. It's durable. It's um, Don't uh, it's all plastic. Yeah, but it's it cannot break. There is nothing which can break off so it's um, and um, the pictures are really nice. Actually, this one has even a, a, a quite a good lens. And if you want the SLR feeling, then um, 
and you you just don't want this uh, this camera because it's not cool or, or nice or whatever please don't make the mistake and take one of the vintage looking uh, cameras with um, a lot of electronics in them you you will not be happy even if they work today they will not work for long and um, they are a, they are really a pain to get the batteries um, I, I know uh, some personal I know some people who used uh, a friend of mine used his a e1 program camera he took pictures on holiday with the family he was uh, and they turned on out bad because the, the 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 electronics are bad of this camera. They 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 were not back then. The quality was not good to start with, and they are very old already. So it's unfortunate, but the reality is that the film cameras, which sit in between these two kind of cameras, the old full manual cameras and the autofocus cameras the cameras which which sit in between these two i would stay away from them go full manual um or go modern day and or get one of these they are really fun they are really fun they, they, you, you cannot. They are not. They are not expensive. I, I paid. I think five euros for this thing. I hope I, I can spare you some pain and financial loss and lost pictures because of a uninformed decision of a bad decision when it comes to deciding which kind of film camera you want to get. Um, because film. Film is getting expensive, and of course, uh, you lose your pictures. That's the, the most horrible thing. Because uh, we know with these old cameras, every picture is um, well thought of. Uh, the, and um, when, when you lose all of them because the camera didn't work, the shutter didn't work, bad exposed, whatever, uh, that's horrible horrible okay i hope you have fun with your cameras bye